Isis. Isis is the great female generative power, the essence of things. Plato, according to Plutarch. One element of the old cosmogony was destined to outlive Egyptian magic, the cult of Isis. The great goddess evokes gentleness, maternal constancy, devotion to husband, and the fertility and grace of woman. She fosters everything born, everything that grows. Her tears swell in the waters of the Nile which, overflowing, fertilize the earth. Her soul dwells in the star Sirius, and for thousands of years the appearance of Sirius in the dawning sky during the summer solstice was a signal to the Egyptians for the return of the Nile flood, restored by the grieving Isis, Osiris, the husband, rose again. The ever-recurrent procreative act took place. Osiris, the sacred Nile, fertilized the green-growing land of Egypt. Isis had many names, and she united the qualities of many local divinities. The faithful sought her protection, and the alien recognized in her the traits of the mother goddesses of his homeland, Minerva, Aphrodite, Ceres, Hecate. Isis towered above them all. Her motherliness contrasted with the wanton, cruel behavior of Astarte, Anitis, Cybele, the formidable goddesses of the Orient, and the holocaust of maidens and mutilated youths whom they subjected. These goddesses loved human sacrifice, war, barrenness, but it was life that Isis loved and protected. Her cult spread throughout Europe and Western Asia, and traces of it merged finally with nascent Christianity. Many attributes of the Holy Virgin were borrowed from Isis, the Immaculate, Mater Domina, an appellation that survives in the form Madonna. Indeed, says J.G. Fraser in describing the cult of Isis, her stately ritual, with its shaven and tonsured priests, its matins and its vespers, its tinkling music, its baptism and aspersions of holy water, its solemn processions, the jeweled images of the Mother of God, presented many points of similarity to the pomp and ceremony of Catholicism. There was significance in everything pertaining to the goddess's figure and dress. On the base of her statue, in the city of Sais, these enigmatic words were carved. I am everything that was, that is, that shall be. Nor has any mortal ever been able to discover what lies under my veil. Apuleius vividly portrays the goddess, and from his description the Jesuit Athanasius Kircher had a woodcut made, in which Isis is crowned with a coil of hair, symbol of the moon's influence upon herbs and grasses. Wheat adorns her head, as a reminder that she was the discoverer of grain and taught us how to cultivate it. Her hair is drawn through a sphere which represents the world. This sphere rests on a garland of flowers, denoting her rule over the plant world. The rich headdress is completed by two snakes, signifying doubly the moon's generative power and its sinuous path. Isis's flowing hair means that she is the nurturer of the whole world. In her left hand, she holds the pail, symbol of the Nile flood. In her right, the sistrum, a jingling instrument sacred to her. This, according to Kircher, reveals her as the genius of the Nile and guardian against evil. Her robe glows with all the colors of the moon, and being queen of the firmament, she wears a star-sewn mantle, the hem of which is decorated with flowers, symbolic of the soil and recalling that Isis is the discoverer of healing herbal juices. On her womb she wears a half-moon, whose magic rays fertilize the earth. Her right foot is on land, her left in the water. She presides over both elements. She is the Stella Maris, star of the sea, guardian of all that journey upon the ocean. And the ship, a feminine symbol, is consecrated to Isis. All these attributes the believer regarded with curiosity. They excited his imagination. The figure of Isis preoccupied both the simple-minded and the philosophic. He who sought higher knowledge soon turned away from the interpretation of Stoic philosophers. It meant little to him that the myth symbolized the overflowing Nile, an eclipse of the moon or other astronomical events. From the world of matter, he withdrew to the sphere of ideas, seeking a transcendent key to the legend of the world mother. 
Plutarch, whose ideology is deeply tinged with Platonic and Oriental esotericism, speaks in mysterious terms of the Holy Trinity of Osiris, Isis, and the son Horus. They corporealize, he says, intelligence, matter, and cosmos, and they are called the most perfect triangle. The proportions of this triangle express a divine secret. The base, equal to four, is Isis, the female conceiving element. The vertical, equal to three, is Osiris, the male creative principle. The hypotenuse, five, is Horus, the offspring. Any triangle traced in these proportions is a sacred diagram endowed with magic power, and similarly are the three numbers, carrying supernatural forces. The Egyptians and the philosophers of the Pythagorean school were devoted to the wisdom of numbers, as we shall see in the following chapter. Whenever in later times numbers and geometrical figures appear in magic circles and on talismans, we may trace them back to ancient numerology. Numbers, Plutarch says, allude to something which the founder of this sect had observed in the Egyptian temples. They refer to some ceremonies performed in them, or to some symbols exhibited there. The secret, however, Plutarch cannot or does not want to reveal, though he affirms repeatedly that all this has a profound meaning. Everything in the Egyptian religion, he says, is to be understood allegorically. Isis lived on in the Christian West, not only in the cult of the Madonna, but also in the occult doctrine of the magicians. Following Plutarch's ideas, they discovered in the godmother of antiquity an occult allegory, that of the world soul, which nurtures the entire creation at God's behest. Cast out of the Christian heaven, she continues in the world of the stars and upon earth to sow the essence of life. She is the feminine part of nature, or that property which renders her a suitable subject for the production of all other beings. A 17th century engraving shows the world soul with some of the symbols of the ancient Isis, flowing hair, the half moon on her womb, one foot in the water, the other on land. She is chained to God, according to Plutarch saying, Isis always partakes of the supreme. And man, the ape of God, is chained to her, as he owes his very life to the seed that flows from her breast. Centuries passed, and still her image persisted. At the end of the 18th century, she was remembered by men who seemed close to every magical sentiment, the leaders of the French Revolution. At the solemn ceremony performed in honor of the Supreme Being, Robespierre, in a vague remembrance of the mysterious inscription of Sais, put the torch to a veil that covered the gigantic statue of a woman, Isis, whose generative power was interpreted now as reason, the nurturer of progress.